script events. There's like, did you move your mouse left? Yeah, there'll be an event for that. Did you breathe? There'll be an event for that. There's, there's got uh, tags like canvas tags have become increasingly powerful. You can embed codecs and run things right in the browser. So uh, the path to exploitation is going to shorten up for sure. There's, uh, there's all sorts of talk about, oh, this whole same domain, same origin policy is really bothering us. It's not allowing us to mash up everything. So we're going to implement mechanisms which are going to selectively do away with same origin policies. Now these things, I guarantee you, have not been thought through properly. And sooner or later, there's going to be mistakes made. Like Harun said in his talk yesterday that, you know, a few years ago, we used to poo-poo XSS, like, oh, cross-site scripting, what the hell, it's just popping up alert boxes. But now we know that simple attack vector, which used to be just once, you know, alert document.cookie, now it's become really powerful. And now its uh, impact has, has sort of grown exponentially. Sure enough, with HTML5, this is going to happen. They're talking about persistent storage. They're talking about online and offline database storage. They're, they're talking about tear away applications and whatnot. I, I'm willing to see that, I'm willing to bet that it's going to keep us in jobs for a very long time. Right. So talking about the attacks and the open attack surface, what kind of attack surface do we have today? It's, it's all mostly got to do with web. On the back end, it's port 80 or port 443 and whatever that lies behind these ports. So web applications, it's, it's not about the web server anymore. A few years ago, we were talking about exploiting IIS 5 and Apache and you know Novell servers. Things have moved beyond the servers. Things have now gone into the back end. Where that's where all the juice lies. That's where every developer makes mistakes in publishing their web app and bridging old legacy web apps together. And just getting code that runs. I mean, getting it run is a miracle. So you don't, you don't bother fixing <coughs> it up. And most of our pen tests, I mean, we do pen testing as a company. Most of our pen tests are app pen tests. And there's not an app that hasn't been broken yet. And there's something or the other and gives up the gold. That's where all the juice lies. On the desktop side, all your attack surface is your attack surface is now pretty much limited to just browsers, documents, libraries, media handlers, and any other fancy things you add on top of it, like Java applets. Flash, Silverlight, I mean, dot .NET, QuickTime, whatever, whatever you do, whatever elements that you can trigger by loading HTML code or by sharing documents. This is now your attack surface. So in, in summary, your attack surface is in three common areas. One is you have browsers. Most of our attacks are going to be browser based. And any plugins that the browsers use. We'll talk about browsers a little bit. Browsers are incredibly complex pieces of software. Coming to back end applications, you have web applications, the business logic of web apps, and databases that lie beyond the web apps. And last but not least, is you have Documents, I mean, documents, the, the attack vectors from documents are growing quite rapidly. These are not yet thoroughly explored only because the formats are proprietary. HTML has been beaten up in and out because it's ASCII text. You can read it, you can reverse it, you can read up whatever specs you have and you can learn it up. But it's not very easy to create your own Word document from the command line. You just can't like VI it and, and write tags and create your own Word document. You need to know how you need to know how Microsoft implements it, or uh, you just can't. You know, it's it's difficult to make up your own PDFs as well. I'll say difficult. It's it's possible. We'll we'll see some of those. But these documents are rendered by their engines. And what are these engines? Microsoft Office, Adobe Reader, Foxit, 
or whatever you may have and soon all this is going to move online as well so this whole document rendering and all the libraries that are available on documents that's going to move into the back end google docs office live what will happen if you have some bug in a document there were quite a few bugs published. There was bugs with the J JPEG parsing libraries. There was bugs in media handlers. Now, if any of your documents have embedded content, embedded pictures, embedded media, and you reference a vulnerable library, you can trigger an exploit by just simply viewing a document. And that's, that's the third and pretty deadly attack vector because it's largely unexplored. So given this, given this scenario, you have browsers, you have documents, and you have web applications. How can you begin spreading your wings and trying to grab every desktop? That's what we're going to try and make sense of. Right. Let me give you a quick preview into some of these exploits. Let me show you, um, let me show you some examples of recent exploits, browser-based exploits, doc-based exploits. Web app exploits, everybody knows, right? Everybody knows web hacking. Everybody's getting free internet in this hotel. So I'm not going to mention how to do it. Right. Um, let's come to browser attacks. What's a browser? I mean, what does a browser look like and feel like? What, what does it do? It's, it's a complex piece of software. It's as complex as any operating system. There's lots of components, lots of moving parts. There's a network interface is this whole document object model in which you can load your HTML, load style sheets, and also load JavaScript. It's, it comes with its own interpreter and interpreting language. An interpreting language that is so powerful it can modify the document object model itself. So you can write JavaScript itself modifies itself. You can write JavaScript to build up and add to your DOM or subtract from the DOM as you see fit. You can write HTML and JavaScript code, which can also reference any plugin that you have in your browser. Any toolbar, any media handler, any additional framework like Java or .NET, all these can be referenced through various DOM interfaces exposed through JavaScript <coughs> or other VB script or different scripting languages. This is what browsers look like. This is what every average user's browser is. Uh, it's not far from reality. You, you fire up any, any computer, you at least see two or three toolbars, you'll see a whole lot of system tray icons. Largely, this stuff is not being used, but everything runs along your browser. Now, when I say that a browser is pretty much like an operating system, you think of the curve, think of the toolbars, think of the plugins, think of all these as kernel drivers to your operating system. Think of the document object model as a kernel. Think of all these toolbars as drivers and extensions to your kernel. Think of all the HTML as user land code. Think of JavaScript as your runtime environment. There is no security inside the browser space. If you do something, you can get control of the complete browser. It's as secure as DOS is. Everything in one flat process, kernel, user land, memory, everything is touchable by everything else. Last year I did a big rant on browsers and uh, I just tried to prove my point that browsers suck when it comes to security. And I'm, I'm glad that they suck because I've, I've got a job as an exploit writer for the next few years. Uh, we've seen some improvements in browsers. We've seen IE8 which implements a uh, dual process model, so tabs run in a separate process. IE8 has done things like uh, always opt in for DEP, so all your heap is non-executable. Um, of course, with the OS is address space layer randomization, the bar to exploitation is pretty high. Uh, there's Google Chrome, which is still growing up, but uh, for some odd reason, people love it. That also, that also uh, operates on a dual process model. Firefox keeps on adding version numbers, but really doesn't do much. Um, they, they, they still try to win our hearts by saying it's free and, you know,